Good evening, good evening, good evening. It is the Don and Dom show again. I changed the title up a little bit, trying to see if we get a little more traction today. Um, hopefully everybody is doing well. I think I actually got it right and turned off the sound where I'm supposed to. I know sometimes I'm bad about that. I have popped in Dom's channel uh, link in the box already. It's in the description box also. So if you don't know who the gentleman is next to me, that is Dom, AKA Primetime Treasure Hunter, a very good dear friend of the channel. Uh, before we get into the topic at hand, I just wanna run off just a couple real quick things and I'm gonna swing this over to Dom here. Patreon, if you're in Patreon, I just posted a semi longer bolo video. I've been promising this one's a triple one. The next part, which is as long as the part that I just posted today, has got three different things, a bunch of explanations, and the whole works in there, too. Um, my postcard video of the frog. I ordered the frog. I did that a little while ago. I've got the video, which you'll get to see um, of how to set up the postcards, print them, and the whole works. You'll see all that aspect. It will be up tomorrow for sure. It's all done. Finished editing it today myself. So it is done 100%. It's processed and will be uploaded after the show. So anyway, it will be up by tomorrow evening. Um, before we, we go any farther, let me pop this over to the gentleman here. I guess that would be my my it's left, I guess. Weird. It's always weird figuring that out. You yeah, gotta, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a screen here. So yeah. but Don, you, you're on my left. Yeah. Yes, see, yeah, see that is, there, your there we go. Looks a little, it looks a little neater. I could tell you clean up a little bit in here today. No, you you haven't seen it. Not, not bad. You know. My office is full of stuff on every inch of the right. floor. Got a few Doritos there on the floor. You got to back them up. Okay. All right. No junk food. <laughs> I don't eat junk food anymore. <laughs> well, trying to make me look bad on junk food. No, no, no. I don't eat junk food. <laughs> Doritos and Mountain Dew go good together. That's why we're a good pairing. Not saying they don't. I just can't eat them anymore. No soda. I got a, a fruit smoothie. That's what I'm drinking right now, actually. Fruit smoothie. I have been known to have a fruit smoothie to the surprise of Carol Cedrone, who's here in the chat. So I want to say hi to Carol. Strawberry and banana. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I make all sorts of concoctions. I mean, you never know. Juice it's different, it. different every time. <laughs> Juice it. The only thing I didn't like was the carrot. Uh, let's, let's, let's slide this over to Dom since we're already in discussion here. We'll let Dom introduce himself, maybe give just a little brief past history of where you're at, where you're going before we get into the topic today. All right. So my name is Dominic. As you can see, my, my name is the primetime treasure hunter. I love to hunt for treasures at all sorts of locations, particularly estate sales when I'm not getting banned from them. If you're not uh, familiar with that, go check out my uh, one of my more recent videos. Uh, garage sales are also lots of fun for me. Uh, rummage sales, flea markets, private picks, and the like. So I uh, do a lot of that on the channel. Do some uh, educational videos as well, shipping tip videos, what sold videos. I specialize in comic books, but uh, I love all things vintage and collectible. And uh, Don and I have a, you know, a shared interest and love of learning, which is one of the big things that brings us uh, together and our channels together. And um, you know, we're very passionate about reselling and growing our business. And YouTube is an extension of that, uh, so you know, we're passionate <clears throat> about that as well. And uh, I've been doing this for a long time, uh, you know, just like Donna has. I've been doing it since 1999 on eBay. And, um, you know, I do a little bit on Facebook Marketplace here and there as well. But eBay is really the main place that I uh, do my do my selling on. So anyway, that's the general spiel. Uh, I just see somebody's talking about the Zoom eBay check. And, yeah, I got a bunch of uh, invites on that. I haven't done any of those. I'm not going to... Um my opinion on those, it's all um, PR based as, as far as what I see. But anyway, I'm not into that. I haven't seen it. If somebody else enjoyed it, that's that's great. But uh, anyway, with the topic at hand, controlling your business. Now, we're going to talk general. We're going to talk about the whole aspect of your business. Dom and I both obviously do YouTube. We do other things as well as just reselling. So it's it's a, a broad mix of stuff that comes into the business. When, when I first started and, and I just had one stream of revenue, things were a lot different. It was a lot harder, a lot more involved. And, and there's always that point where it gets to be a whole bunch of work and it's all coming down on you. You're not being as successful 
as you feel you should be or you feel you want to be. You're putting in a ton of effort, a ton of, of things into your business and it's just not going where, you, where you're at. The business is running you. You're not running the business is, is my take on that. That's going to be the, the the basis for for some of today's conversation. I want to keep it all heavy. We want to have a little fun fun tonight, obviously as well too. But it's summertime. A lot of people are having having concerns, having sales issues, and taking control can mean a bunch of different things. I'm going to slide this over to Dom in just a second here, but I'll throw out the very first section of of my thoughts on some of this with taking control. It's more so knowing your business in depth, knowing when something's veering off, um, like doing projections or something for yourselves, knowing immediately, not trusting some report that eBay has done, knowing how, how you yourself can figure out what's going on with your business, I guess is the point to, to take control of it, to understand when a sales goes down, understand why, understand the holiday aspects. I mean, that's just a basic, quick, easy start for most people. And that's through tracking and keeping keeping data and information, I guess. Why don't we hop over to Dom and, and why don't you start off with your thoughts on, on, on some approaches, I guess, going into the same, same thought pattern of fixing this or steering your, your yourself, controlling it more so, so you're in charge and it's not running you. Yeah, it's a mindset. It's a lifestyle having that approach. You have to try to not have a victim mentality. And that's what leads to a lot of people quitting and stopping is because they feel like they're powerless and there's things that they can't um, that they can't, that they can't control and they can't, uh, you know, they don't have any say over. And there are things like that. I mean, there's policies that, you know, companies put out, businesses come out and, um, you know, come out with, and, you know, you either have to try to roll with the punches and find ways around it, unless it's just absolutely so horrible and so untenable that you have no choice to move on and try something else or try a different platform or something like that. But that would be an extreme case. In most instances, there are ways to work around either problems on a platform and even problems, you know, that are going on in the economy, you know, no matter how bad things are in the economy, there are still things that people want and will save their money and pay for. And you may have to move away towards one type of product and shift into selling something different and start dabbling in something new. Um, you know, no matter what it is, it doesn't matter. It could be, you know, something going on with YouTube and a lot of people quit YouTube because they can't get the views, they can't get the subscribers, um, and they blame YouTube for it. Uh, happens all the time, but it's not really YouTube's fault. So there's a lot of inward, uh, looking that needs to happen. Uh, and you have to be honest with yourself. And sometimes you just have to ask people around you to be honest with you and say, Hey, listen, is there something that I'm doing wrong? Did, am I messing something up? Take a look at my store. Could you review my store? Give me some suggestions, ideas. What am I not seeing? Sometimes you need a second pair of eyes, a third pair of eyes, and you need people who are willing to be honest with you and let them know that they're free to, you know, give you, uh, advice that, um, you know, you, they might otherwise feel maybe shy to tell you. And if you're, you're open to that, it could really help you out a lot, but you gotta, you gotta be willing to take personal responsibility. And that goes with taking control. But definitely. So if, if I mess up something, it's a lesson learned. I figured something out. I messed it up and I know what not to do next time. I don't say, oh, darn it. I don't want to do this anymore. Even if eBay makes a mistake, and we all, Lord knows, everybody here knows eBay makes mistakes constantly, every day. It'd be impossible not for me to find some mistakes somewhere in something that I did, a page doesn't load or something. But the point of it is, even if they've messed up something, if you've got a business and you've got a goal and you know what you want to get, who cares if they messed up something? People say, well, you complain or you, you get on eBay for this or that, but you're not leaving the site. You know, I have issues with what they do. But I'm not going to let their their mentality, their poor ownership of this the platform, just you know, deter me from making money off of it. It's not about what they're doing. It's about what I'm going to do with th this opportunity to still make money on the platform. I I never tell anybody, hey, drop off the site. Most of the time, if I see somebody say that, I'll come in there and tell them it, it's not really 
at that point, unless you're just totally done with it. I would never think that that would be a good way to run a business. If, if I've got a revenue stream, that's why I get on and, and get irritated with eBay, because if they cut off classified StubHub, as we all know, and, and just reinvest that into like stock buybacks, that's not that's right. not good business in, in my my mind here. Well, we talked about it last time when we did the show on my channel in that, um, you know, we had concerns that we were bringing to the table about uh, eBay's policies that they were enacting and some of the things that they were doing that was causing a lot of people uh, frustration. And, you know, there's always that segment of people who say, well, you know, if you're complaining about that much, then why do you stay on there? Why don't you why don't you just leave? Um, and like I said, if things got that drastic, if something got that bad, that always is a potential option. Just depends on what it is. You never rule out anything hundred percent, but what we were talking about at that time, I gave the analogy of that. There's a, you know, there's a, there's a house, a big gorgeous house that we live in and that we like, and that we see it kind of falling apart a little bit. Like there's some shingles falling off and we really love the house and we want to make sure that it, you know, that it doesn't fall down and it doesn't collapse. And so, you know, we're trying to like race and, you know, pick up the shingles and put them back on or call the person who could help, you know, get the shingle fixed. So, you know, we're, we're trying to bring up issues that we think would improve uh, the site and, and improve the platform and make it uh, better. And, um, you know, that's one reason for still staying on site. It's still a better house than other houses on the block. So we still want to live in there, but, you know, we start, we're starting to see, we're starting to see cracks in the foundation, you know, so we're trying to call attention to it. And that's, that's why we, we both do those types of videos, uh, sometimes. Most definitely. Um, like if I, I tell somebody to, if you want to improve sales and stuff, you got to help get the site in a, a, a better stance with some of the sellers. I, I, I know I don't want to complain about sellers or anything else like that. Cause I've been guilty of doing stupid things by mistake too, but like reporting people who are doing things that are illegal on the site. It makes us look bad. I don't want to be dogging on eBay today. I don't want, I, I guess I've steered it in the wrong direction on the conversation. The, the point of it is though, e even if eBay or Etsy or whatever the case may be, does some stupid, awful move, I take it as a challenge. And then I'm going to try and figure out how to get past that roadblock and keep going and expanding eBay's changed all these item specifics. I got a lot of people telling me their their sales are tanking. This is happening. That's happening. Do some searches on the categories you were in and see what shows up and mimic what you see showing up. That's right. an easy way to, to, right. to figure out what they're doing. If it changes two weeks down the road, again, this is going about you controlling your business. Don't just rely on eBay to tell you where to put it or suggestions, or it worked fine two weeks ago and now suddenly something's going on. Dom uses the house the house uh, um, analogy. And I use a similar house one for the structure of your listings. You've got the, the main frame, the, the foundation of your listing is your title, your photo, and your price. Those three things are locked into the main section of your listing. All your other photos can be sitting on another server, not even related to those, but those three things are always locked together on eBay. We know that's a fact by when they lost the photos. So that's, that's a done deal. So if you change one of those three things on bad, slow sales, and you constantly go and work your store, you can get some traction on it. You can fix a keyword that you didn't have in there. Your price was screwy because you, you didn't look or you didn't find an item for sale. Now, all of a sudden, there's three or four of these that have sold since the two weeks ago when you listed it for the first time. So there's a lot of reasons why things happen. And knowing and being able to fix them and controlling your own store, I guess, is the biggest part of it. Um, Dom's the same way I know with stuff. He knows what happens with this store. Uh, some examples are like uh, some of his pricings with some of his sending offers out, things like that. He knows what he can he can he can do to push people to buy things. And I guess that's again he's controlling the the atmosphere. You do not agree on that? Yeah, I mean that as actually you, you talk about it a lot as one of eBay's best features. You recently did a video on it. Um, and, uh, you know, sending offers to watchers is a great example of taking control rather than just sitting there and waiting for the offers to come to you. Um, we're past the time that you could really be passive with uh, eBay or wherever it, uh, else it is that you sell 
you've got to make moves. You've got to make connections. I mean, Don talks about this, for example. I'll give you an example right behind me. I haven't shipped it yet, but um, making relationships with the people who buy from you, that helps set up connections and that could help generate sales. Perfect example. Let me show you one. So I have someone who likes to buy manga. So for those of you who don't know, they're Japanese comic books. And there's a person who's a customer of mine on eBay and sent me a message and said, hey, did you get any more manga in? Because the person knows I have that and I don't always have it listed. Uh, so I use emails like that to and messages like that to influence what I'm going to list. So I said, all right, well, I'll take a look. I snapped some photos, sent him a picture. I said, this is what I have. You're interested in anything? He said, yeah, I'm interested in such and such. He goes, you know, depending on the price, let me know. So I said, okay, now I picked these up for a buck a piece. Hang on. I got them right here. I just posted about it on Instagram today. If you're not on my Instagram, it's at prime underscore time underscore treasure. Uh, these are manga books called No Need for Tenchi. Okay. And there's 12 of them. And this is what they look like. If you've never seen manga books before, they're black. They're like black and white comic books inside. I got them for a buck a piece. These just sold today for $145. Okay. So, but that was not, I didn't just randomly put that up. That was based on me building a connection with somebody, keeping that connection going responding to messages and you know just again there's many relate examples of those kind of relationships that i've built up and there are people who the opposite happens where i know for example someone likes a particular comic book or a particular toy brand and i'll get it in and i'll reach out to that person and say hey guess what i just got this in i could even do i've even done that with this guy before i said hey guess what i got more manga in it just so happened this time he reached out to me but then you could do it the other way around as well so that's a great example of taking control and um you know you build build a nice source of income that way the hundred percent on all that for sure i've got people that will constantly uh reach out to me this is always your open when you're when you're when customers ask you questions on collectibles now i don't care clothing it's not so much but in a collectible field almost any collectible field if somebody's asking me questions on something usually by their question alone you can tell if they're a collector if you know your customer base, if they ask a certain very specific question, you automatically know that they're a collector. It's something only a collector would ask. And those are the people that I list the same thing every single day on, on certain days of the week, like buttons. At three or four times a week, somebody's listing buttons here. And when people ask, do you have this? Do you have that? I always tell them to follow the store and to check back that our volume, our inventory is so huge, I can't go through it to pick specifics, but we always list new items. I always tell everybody who asks questions on this or that, that same thing, no matter what, always. And it's it's true. I've got a ton of inventory in, in the items that we're talking about. That draws them back. It grows people coming back to your store. Now, if you don't list new items, that's going to hurt you. They're not going to believe you're honest. They're not going to believe that you're interested in supplying them. But if you answer quickly, you're on the ball with stuff. If they, you know, ask questions like that, always, always, always get them to follow your store. This way, if they follow your store and you do a sales and markdown, they can also get your newsletter that says these items are on sale. It's like adding the coupon in to a package going out. This is stuff you got to do. eBay is not going to give you any of this unless you go out and do it yourself. Again, I'm controlling it. I'm not letting eBay just force me to do this or force me to do that. I am stepping out there and putting out all these new options and trying them out. What works, I go forward with. What doesn't work, I don't use again. Right. Absolutely. Uh, I, I'll bring up I'll bring up another point, Don. I've, I've seen it come up in the chat. Um, this question is a question that comes up. Almost every day, which is one of my points about it. Um, I see it all the time in my Facebook group. For those who don't know, it's called the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. And um, it's and was asked in the chat earlier today, which is, has anyone noticed that sales are slow for the last three days? That question could be asked by any seller any day during the year from the time eBay was created until now. And I guarantee you, for the person who asked that question, that they will be able to find a whole bunch of other people 
who will agree with them that their sales are slow for the last three days. Here's the problem with that, though. That could potentially lead to groupthink and lead to people feeling, because of a selection bias of who's responding, that this is just something that is outside of their control. Well, look here, there's 10 other people who said they're having sole sales. So it's not anything I'm doing because it's happening to them too. Here's the thing I realize: There's also 50, 100, 200 people that same very time where you're having slow sales that they're having really great sales and they just sold 10, 20, 30, 40 items over the weekend. So what are those people doing to generate those types of sales? That's what you got to do along with what Don was saying earlier is who's having success. Look at the people who are having success. Same thing with YouTube. Who's having success on YouTube and why? What are the patterns behind what it is they're doing? It's not just random. There's something that they are doing that you are not doing if it's going on a consistent basis. Now, you know, everyone's going to have little fluctuations here or there, but if it's becoming a pattern and you're starting to get concerned about it, then you have to take a hard look. Um, again, there's always going to be someone around you that's going to say that they have slow sales. So just make sure when you ask that question that you're asking it in a framework that you want to figure out, what can I do? What can I do to take control to change it? Not, oh, well, okay, sales are slow for all these other people and you know, there's nothing I could do and just kind of throw your hands up in the air and just walk away. That's that's where I see that turning it. That question could potentially turn into a, you know become a risk factor for people for for quitting. I can see that too, and I do see that quite a bit. I hear constant. If somebody jumps on the my sales are are, are dead bandwagon, a lot of other right. people will at least the ones that are having issues will say that. Right. I, right. I'm not saying you're not having bad sales. Right. But a couple days sales here, a couple uh, days sales there mean nothing right. uh, when you're looking at it in the right frame. If you're looking at it on a month by month basis, a day or two here isn't going to make it or break it either way. The next day after your three day slump could be twice of, of what a normal day would be in the first place. And that kind of thing happens. If, if you pay attention to your calendar, you know events like a holiday coming up, the, the, the week of the fourth is going to be slow for most people. I can tell you right now because people are going to be out. They're gonna be with their family. It's like that every single year. And every year when it comes around, I hear people all upset that their sales are down. Again, right. this is, I'm in control of my business. I know when it's going to be slow a year, two, three years in advance. I know all the calendar days are, are marked down. I keep track of that stuff. I run my business. I control what goes on. I know what to expect on my calendar. I know what to project for my sales. If something happens, you've got tools. We both use them here. You've got the opportunity to do sales and markdowns. You've got the opportunity to promote your listings if you so wish. I don't promote listings, but if you're in clothing or something else like that, eBay's own reports show that you're going to get sales because they're not showing your items as much as the other ones. So, you know, in some categories, maybe you might need to do stuff like that. There's tools there that you can use to get those sales coming back in though. I've never had a time where I couldn't do something to bring the sales back in, whether it meant I listed a few more things, I turned off the TV for an hour and spent one more hour listing or pricing or whatever the heck I'm doing, but I controlled it. I don't, if I want to make more money, I list more items. I get more people in. I put some more hours in the labor or something. If you want more money, would that not for you as well work? Don't you just list some more items? Isn't that even uh, in and of itself uh, another way to bring more revenue coming in? Yeah, provided you're listing quality items. Well, good items. Want, of, of course, you know. Uh, but yeah, because the, the mathematical logic of that is that the more stuff you have available, then the more of a chance there is that someone's going to find something you have that they're going to uh, purchase. Of course, we've talked about the importance of making sure you're diversifying the niches or niches that you're in. That's another thing you could do. Another thing I personally do, if I have a few days where sales are slower than I would like them to be, is what I'll do is I will focus on what it is that I know from my store sells the best. 
And for me, that always means every time that I'm going back to comic books, especially nowadays with how comic books has just exploded. Forbes just did a, uh, a whole article about I how it's absolutely going bonkers. And if you're not looking into reselling comic books, you need to because it's just it's crazy what's going on in that in that area right now. And I've been talking about it for years and years and years. I know Don's been into comic books for a long time as well. Since but I that's was what, seven. But that's what I always go back to. Like I will literally say, I am not listing anything else. Besides, this is me taking control, right? I'm saying I'm not listing anything else besides comic books for the next two days until I until I start seeing, you know, more regular chings coming in, and then once that starts happening, then I'll start easing back into some of the more diverse areas that I tend to sell in when you go over to my store. And so I do that all the time if I'm having that kind of issue. Also remember, as Don mentioned, you know, you're having a couple of slow days here and there. That's normal. Ebb and flow is normal for any business. It's normal for any market. That's just how it goes. That's part of a healthy business actually is to have some ebb and flow. That's okay. So, you know, I think a lot of people get really thrown off by a couple of bad days and the sky is not falling. It's all right. Yeah. You can have a problem with what's going on. There's nothing wrong with that, but this is a business. Far too many people will take it personally. And, and that's where you separate every aspect of what you're doing as a reseller versus your home life. Now for me and Dom, it's an obsession, so it might not be as easy, but I can turn reselling Don off and be dad or, or, a husband or whatever I need to be, you know, just like that, because that's, that's life. My, my life is more intertwined with every aspect of reselling, but I still have a barrier. The kids know when, if they're not working, you know, don't talk to me. I'm doing this. I'm in the studio today. Um, the office is locked. Don't come knocking on the door, stuff like that. So, you know, I'm in control of it when, it, when the business is running that that's the point. And, and, you have to know your business, I guess, too. Like Dom mentioning, I know what I need to sell if I want to get extra money. I talk about this all the time. If my sales dip, I've got like single, I, I got a bin of items that will sell for hundreds of dollars. Some of them maybe even up to a thousand. I've got a big, huge box of posters that have been sitting here for like a year and a half. And I don't, I've been listing other things because I enjoy listing this. I enjoy selling that. And, and they're hot this time or I'm, I'm just got some new merchandise in and I'm trying to build that repeat business again, like buttons. I've been listing buttons now since December 6th. I've got $130,000 worth of just uniform buttons up right this second. And that's just a, a touch on it. But I've drummed up so much interest that my buttons show up on almost all the souls in these categories that I'm selling in. So whenever somebody's looking, they're looking at me, the prices that they use are based on my prices, which are higher than theirs. So their prices are going up, which again, increases my profit. I know my business. I know the game. I know every, like Dom talking about what sells. I know my competitors, how many uh, individual items they have, the quality of their photos, what they list and their pricing structures. I know that because I spent the time to look into who am I up against? How am I going to get more sales than them and control this into my my favor? And I figured out how to do that in some categories. You're not going to win every time, but I'll probably True. True. Uh, another thing you could do, uh, we've both done videos about this, is it's taking some time to organize your business a bit. And, you know, if you have some, what, you know, what people sometimes call death piles is, uh, go through those, go through those, um, you know, that, you know, back stock or whatever term you want to use for it. I call them profit piles, but, uh, you know, do a little treasure hunt in your own house. Like I did this yesterday. I went to a box of comics that I hadn't gone to in a long time. I pulled out young Avengers number one, which I listed for $400 today. And uh, Bat Batgirl number twelve by uh, Stanley Art Germ Lau, who's a comic artist. Don, you would love, I think, if you're familiar with Art Germ's work. Yeah, um, I know. And, and listed that for, I think, sixty bucks. But the the point is, is that I didn't even realize those were in there. But I just decided to take the time and you know have. It's always fun for me to go through a box of comics, went through them, organized them. Ta again, taking control, found some cool stuff. That these books are hot right now boom listed them and hopefully that brings in a sale pretty soon so um that's actually combining two things that's me going back to 
my area that I know I do the best in. And it's also going in and controlling it by organizing it and doing a strategic search for stuff and pulling that stuff out and, and listing that. So that's another thing to do just to exert control over the situation. Again, it's a mindset that you have to have. That, that another, I mean, there's, there's so many things that you can do if you were not in business, maybe some of these aren't apparent. If you haven't done this, you're not into these areas as much as, say, Dom Comics and me into the other stuff, too. All it's going to take you is some time to learn those areas. Look at your competitors. Look at the folks who have the most amount of items in a specific niche or category you're selling in. Not just one. You have to look at a bunch of them, half a dozen at least, of the top-end ones. Search through Terapeak. Find some items that are high-priced. Kind of match them with what, what the people are selling. You can get a good idea uh, on the, the structures, what these people are doing and all that kind of stuff too, to help you decide on, on where, where like the niche is going. Some of the best changes I've ever done to my store and my items are from what other people have done first. A competitive, the zoom ins are from somebody else. I've used them since the day I saw them. And since I looked at this guy's sales, I've changed everything that's paper or small into these zoom ins and it has increased my sales. And I think every person that I know who has tried that again, I didn't come up with this. I'm just using somebody else's thing, but everybody that I've suggested it to, I've had tons of Patreons come out and tell me the same thing that we've switched the zoom ins. My sales are up 10, 15, 20% overall, because if you look at everybody else's photos, they're, they're, pardon me, but crap compared to zoom ins that fill up the entire gallery view as you're scanning and sliding through, especially on a cell phone. It's a big difference. It's something small, but it's something that, that gives so you the boost. You know what's going to portray those items better than the other guy. You know your items, you know your store. It's so true. It's so true. I mean, it's Photos, great example, something you could take control over. Those zoom-ins are awesome. I saw Susan's here from Vintage Vagabond Vens. She does an amazing job with that on her listing. She does a nice zoom-in on all of her jewelry pieces. Speaking of jewelry, by the way, a perfect example. So I want to bring this up because I hear this a lot when you bring up a new niche to somebody who doesn't know anything about it. For me, I hear it all the time with comics. Someone says to me, boy, I, I just wish I knew about comics, but, you know, it's just I don't know anything about it. And, uh, you know, I'm just not going to get into it no matter how many times I, I talk about it. And if I were to have had that mindset about jewelry, we would not have made as many. I mean, I just wouldn't have got into the area with Mrs. Primetime. And some people assume that because my wife, Mrs. Primetime, you know, is doing a lot of stuff with the jewelry that she was like an expert in jewelry before we started this. She actually knew very little about jewelry. She knew some about it, but not anything close to what she knows now and not anything close to what I know now about it. But, you know, again, it comes into that passion of learning. And if you have the passion to learn, you remember and you know that everyone started at zero knowledge with every topic, you know, besides Don, who was born knowing all, <laughs> he just he knew all the stuff from the very beginning. You know, no, I'm just kidding, obviously. But, um, you know, we all had to start from scratch and it's not it's not too late. How how I don't care how old you are. 40 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old, 70 years old, doesn't matter. You still have plenty of time that you could learn a new area and start selling in it. So don't sell yourself short. Just don't think of, I never think of age. That's why I act so silly a lot of times because I don't think about that. I mean, I honestly, I, like someone asked me how old I am. I have to actually think a moment because I never think about that. It's just a number. I really don't pay attention to it. So, you know, that's another thing. You just got to get into that, uh, you know, you just got to get in that mindset. Yeah, there, there's so many opportunities that people just aren't thinking about and are missing in just even the basics on, on reselling, even not knowing the site rules and getting yourself uh, hit with an extra 4% fee for not mailing stuff out is a simple one that I hear probably once every other day. It's happened to somebody. Now, it's not trying to criticize somebody, but that if you paid a little more attention to the rules, Again, that would have fixed that. I've messed up too, so I'm not I'm not free and, and clear in any way, shape, or form. But if you make the mistake, don't make it a second time. Write it down somewhere. Stick it up on the wall on a postie or something. Don't ever list this again. Don't ever use that word again. Those are simpleton things about knowing your specific business. Now, comic book-wise, I've picked up 
I probably have, and I'm no way exaggerating, probably around 15,000 comic books that we've picked up in the last 60 days. Wow. Uh, out of there, I got a lot of moderns, Bronze Age, but out of there, again, I know my, I, I investigate things for future reference and stuff. What's going on with She-Hulk right now? What not there something new coming out with She-Hulk? Yeah, yeah. And so um, they're doing a She-Hulk. I don't remember if it's a show or a movie. It's a TV out, series. Yeah. So yeah, show. So um, a hype or speculation involving She Hulk, like She Hulk number one, which people I got them all in that lot. I got first appearance one through. I think it's the entire run of She Hulk, and I'm hanging on to it until the show comes out. Right. Right. I mean, so, yeah. Just yeah, knowing I mean, your business, knowing what you, what you can do with something. Exactly. Exactly. And so by doing what you're doing and being knowledgeable about what's going on in the news is important. And, and it's something I want to bring up too, because I, I think that there's a lot of people in the reselling community who watch resellers like us on YouTube, but only watch resellers on YouTube. And if that's what you're doing, if you're only watching resellers on YouTube, you're selling yourself short. Not that there's anything bad with watching resellers on YouTube. Of course, we, we all do that. But look at other channels and other niches. That's why I brought people like that onto my show. Look at a couple of weeks ago where I had um, uh, Dan on from the coin channel. Okay. Now, you know, he's a, he's a coin shop owner, but he's not really a reseller in the traditional sense. I mean, on a very broad sense, you could say that, but that's not the... The he Bible. does the same thing, but he's very yeah. specialized and he's yeah. got a foundation brick and mortar. Exactly. Or retro blasting for toys. You know, I've had him on, him on my channel too. Don, Don watches him as well. Yeah, he's, he, he's, not, he, he's literally not a seller. He literally doesn't sell. He's just a collector. But I watch his stuff to learn about. He knows the toys. He knows the toys. He knows the toys. He knows the pop culture. Him and his wife, and they've got a, a nice DeLorean too. So they, they do. They're awesome. The like they're. There's comic. I've had comic Tom on. He's one of the top comic guys on YouTube right now. And I go to watch his show with Jim Mint, who I've had on the channel too. He specializes in comics and comic statues. I watch these guys to learn about trends and say, oh my gosh, wow, that's cool. Look at that. This, this is trending. I think I might have that comic book. I'll go get it. But my point is, is that I'm choosing what to do with my time. And I am choosing to invest some of that time into exposing myself to people who that, that sounded bad. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to expose my, uh, my, my, mind, good either, my mind. I'm exposing my mind <laughs> to, uh, to learning about new topics and, um, and, and bringing that knowledge into helping my reselling business. So um, consider doing that for sure. Uh, carve some time out for research and knowledge. It doesn't have to be YouTube, but it could also be books, guides, TV shows, whatever it is that could help your business in terms of learning new stuff I'm there you fully, go Try fully agree with that too like uh, uh sourcing and stuff something i'm sure dom hears and i hear quite often is you're never going to find the stuff we're never going to find the stuff that you show in your videos i've lived and sourced in four different regions um mississippi florida virginia and ohio i've sourced in three state areas around each one of those places and I've been able to source the exact same things in every one of those places. I've been as far as Whittier, California, Denver, Mile High City we've flown into. I've sourced in both of those locations. I can't think of a place that I've been where we didn't find similar like items. I don't go to the normal places as everybody else. Dom goes to flea markets too. Flea markets are good. Antique malls I can find good stuff in. And people assume that, no, it's an antique dealer. They're not going to have stuff priced reasonable. There's people that I talk to. I've got I've got a bunch of errands in my in my group, and one of the errands errands that I talk to quite regularly, he finds the same types of things regularly that I do. He's finally caught on to what what the down dirt of what I do is on the the scheme of things, and and again, he knows his business now. He knows his business. Uh, the, the conversations it, it, you can you can see what what the change is, and you you can see when someone understand in understands and is in control of their business. A lot of folks who are new and, and just trying to get this all down are more worried about getting the items and stuff, and they they're not as up on the other aspects of running a business. Getting the items is like ten percent, fifteen percent of 
what you got to do to get this rolling. Like Dom and me are saying, you, you've you got to take that extra step out there to bring some of this to you, whether it's offers to watchers yeah. or go ahead, shoot. So, so true. I, I'm just, I'm like on the edge of my seat. Want to tell you this because it literally just happened and people are going to think I'm making this up, but literally I just, I just, as we're sitting here talking, Don, my phone literally is going like this. Eh, eh, eh. Uh, 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 like nine times i'm like what is going on right so i look at it and it's nine text messages that came in i'm like wait a minute who, what is going on here so I look at it and it's nine text messages from a guy their pictures who is he's a local dealer at the flea market he also runs estate sales and i've done private picks with him and he knows that when he comes across comic books when he does estate sale clear outs to contact me, but that didn't just happen out of blue. I built that relationship up with him and I made sure I drilled into his head every time I saw him. Hey, so-and-so, every time you, you come across comics, remember me, remember me. If I haven't heard him from him for a while, I'll say, Hey, do you, do you remember what, what, you know, what you got to do when you come across comics? You got to contact me. Yes. Yes. Okay. I know. I remember. And sure enough, here we go right here. I won't put his name on there, but he just sent me this right now. This literally just came across all these comic books and he just sent me the pictures he didn't even write anything because he knows he knows he just knows he just got to send me the pictures that's it and he's not a man of many words but uh but that's what i mean like that just that that was something i had taken control of to build up so if you come across people like that that have stuff that or could those people might come across something you like take the time to build up that relationship with them so they know to call you when you give them your business card, make sure they put the number into their phone right then and there. Cause a lot of people will take the card and then they'll lose it. So I set up a, a chain of communication right then and there. And we send a text back and forth. So I know that I'm in their phone. I tell them, add me to your contacts, uh, that type of thing. But that's, you know, or another example would be when you go out to sales, I can't tell you how many times this has happened to me, Don, where, um, I look out and they don't have anything that I want. And so I'll just say, do you have X, Y, or Z? Ask, oh, always ask. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I have that. I didn't want to bring it out. I didn't want people going through it. You know how many comic collections I've sourced that way and other things that are then linked with the comic collection, toys, things like that all the time. So, you know, people wonder, they're like, well, how do you get all this stuff? Ask. You know? Yeah. So another example. I got a video just just on asking because just like Dom said, I have gotten oodles of stuff that even on the last day of a sale that they just didn't want to put out. They were worried. They wanted to have somebody who would respect it and stuff. And I've gotten huge, massive assortments of things, comic books, uh, trading cards, records, jewelry. Man, I've gotten like 20 pounds worth of jewelry from a place before just for that reason. Or they were afraid of somebody coming in there and ripping them off. You know, I know I've got a little better of a push as Dom probably does too, because people may have seen us or I can at least say, you know, I'm a trustable person. You can see who I am and that kind of thing. But, you know, there's an opportunity for everybody out there to do the, the same basics on this. You know, it, it, it's not, once you know part of your business, you don't have to tackle all at once. Once you know one section of your business, you got the, the process down, like set up the same process for everything. I ship everything the same way. Every one of my listings is done the same way. There's no spot for me to make a mistake because it's not being changed all the time or anything else like that. Everything we do is set up like an assembly line, everything, the photo lineup, where they're stored at. So none of that's a headache. I removed all of that aspect of it. I removed all the aspect out of storage. I know every every single thing in this building, plus in, in our, our other building, where it's at. I can walk to a shelf instantly and tell you where something's at. All that's headache gone. So I can center in on dealings, purchases, slamming um, you know, employee hours, putting prices on stuff running the gambit of getting stuff going, running the business. That's where the, the time should be. It shouldn't always be spent on trying to find something in your inventory, trying to figure out how to list that or how to photograph this. You should have processes down to eliminate right. all that easy stuff. That's all the easy stuff. Right. That's a big step too, in all honesty, and in, in a process. That's why Henry Ford did so well. He created an assembly line process that worked every time. If something was out of step, they knew it instantly because it was out of the process. 
you yeah. know, it was excellent, yeah. excellent thing. And it, again, something that's totally in your control to do. There, th so yeah. much of it's in our control. Right. We're just forced to use a site that, that the people running it, just in my opinion, aren't very good at all with what they're doing. It doesn't mean that we can't run our scheme and our business side of it on our own aside from them and not worry about them, you know, and even dealing with eBay, I had um, some items marked as late, late uh, shipment the other day. And the reason eBay marked them for late shipment is because the tracking showed they arrived late. Didn't matter that I sent them out, you know, less than the time frame I state. And I had to deal with eBay for that. You know what? They did fix it and they fixed it right away. eBay for business. I know a lot of people, complain about contacts. I have phone support still. It's so much easier and it alleviates time from my day just by sending a quick email message through Facebook, eBay for business and to be done with it. I don't have to deal with eBay other than a response. I already know what they're going to ask for every single time. You give them the information first, you give them count number, you know, your, your zip and whatever, whatever the case may be. And you move on with it. You don't let them control the situation. You state the policies and you move on. You know, I'm not saying it's always going to work that way, but I have not had an, an issue that they haven't fixed readily lately, other than they can't fix any of the errors and issues in the item specifics and payment issues. But the, 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 the just on selling is still there. You know, the, the site still functions as a, a main source for most of you, probably for income and revenue coming in. You know, yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll uh, there's a question that came in for me. I'll, I'll answer it from Yvette uh, in a moment. But I, I just before I do that, I'll bring up one other uh, thing that I think you could do that's in your control. I use this all the time, and it's it's really the thing that has helped me get some of my best scores. I mean, a lot of people know about my, you know, estate sale halls and you know garage sale and flea market halls, but really, the most epic halls that I've ever had are ones that are from private picks. One of them I documented, which was, the, uh, I, I called it a storage unit haul video. It was a comic haul, mostly a comic haul video. Um, but it came off of an advertisement that I have posted locally here uh, on Craigslist. And it's a very bold faced ad. It's very, you know, in your face, uh, you know, tension grabbing and, um, you know, very detailed keywords to kind of get the attention of not only comic collectors, but collectors in all sorts of uh, niches, niches that, you know, could be selling all sorts of things that they want to get rid of. And I encourage them to contact me and tell them that, you know, I'm here, I'm available and I'm interested in your collection. And, um, you know, just you know, shoot me a message. And boy, oh boy, I I've just gotten so many amazing deals that way. But again, that's, that's from me taking the time to put that ad together, put it out there, respond to the ads, go out. And it's, it's just another way, another example of taking control. That's just, uh, I can't think of almost a better example than, than that is just literally making your own ad and putting it up somewhere. So, you know, Cra Craigslist is one place, but you could put it ads like that other places as well. Um, the one question, Don, that came in was just real quick from Yvette, which was Dom. We know you have a full-time career that you enjoy. So for you, what drives you to resell or what is your motivation for reselling? Uh, that was a, um, for those of you who don't know, I work full-time as a neuropsychologist. And so I was at the hospital today, which is why Don started. Thank you, by the way, Don, for starting the show a little later, later tonight than, uh, than the normal seven o'clock start time. Um, but my passion from it has been longstanding. I've been doing it since 1999. I love it. I've always wanted to run my own business. And actually, the funny thing about that, Don, is it, and you've talked about it a lot too, which is the freedom. I, yes, I have, I have a full-time job somewhere, but I have a boss and I have supervisors and there's administrators above me and all that type of thing. I don't have that when I have my own business, you know, my bosses are my customers, really that, that, that's the way I look at it. And so, but I feel, you know, in this situation, like I have control over the situation. So I like that freedom. I like that control. I like setting my own course with that. So that's a lot of fun. I like doing that. I like building that up. I like growing it. I like the challenge of YouTube and, um, you know, doing jumping into something that three years ago I had zero experience in whatsoever and trying to 
take on that challenge and you know build things up from there. And seeing just how far I could grow to business. I have two kids. It just turned 16 and 17. And so college is uh, on the horizon. We're starting to college visits. And really, um, the regular job, as good as it is, was not going to cut it to pay college tuition for two kids who are that close in age, you know, back to back. So I wanted something else. I could have chosen to do some kind of private practice or something like that, but I didn't want to do that because it's too close to what I do for my career. I want to do something completely different. And this was just a great fit for it. And that's a long and short, long and the short of it uh, in terms of, you know, what motivates me and drives me uh, to do that every day. So, well, I'll, I'll piggyback on that for, for just a minute here. Now, just because I, I don't just resell these days either. I've had a passion for a lot of things in art and, and stuff like that. We've been running a successful art business for this whole time as well. Just because you're a reseller now and, and maybe you, you're not into clothing and that's what you got to do, or maybe you're not into books and that's what you got to do, or whatever the case may be, don't ever just lock yourself into thinking that what's going on now is going to be what's going on in five years from now. Look at it from a whole different way. Look at what do you want to be? Where do you want to be at in five years? In five years, what do you want out of what's going on? If it means you get a six, your, your reselling going, you can branch off and do this. You can maybe bring in employees and all that kind of stuff, and you can advance it to, to where you want it. But like, like Dom's saying, I, the boss is you in these cases. I'm the boss. I've got employees and the whole works. I can run it the way I feel that would, would be most beneficial to what's going on. I don't have to listen to somebody else. <laughs> if you don't know your business, though, you're not going to be as successful. You need to understand it before you advance to certain levels on here. But again, multiple revenue streams, a goal to get there is what you need to start off with. Don't let your business dictate where you're going. You need to dictate where it's going. You need to decide on where you want to go with it, what's going to go on, what your vision is for your company. Where are you going to go? I'm a company. I'm not just, you know, Don, the reseller guy over here. I do a bunch of stuff. We've got clients that I do artwork for. I write for several things. I'm writing for something, another project we got going on here. I've got thousands invested into an animation project we've been working on for well over a year. Again, these are things that I do on the side, but it's all part of my business. It's all something that I've always wanted to do. Again, I've given up TV. I've given up all this kind of th uh, things that don't advance what I, what I want to uh, get out of my life. I'm getting older. I'm midlife era. I don't want to be 75, 80 and having to work as hard as I am you know, right this minute. So I need to put in the extra effort to get it. But I know what I want out of this. I'm going to control where I go. I'm not going to give up until I get there. If it means I keep doing this and I keep doing this, at least I can say that I tried and I never gave up and I put every single bit of me into what I'm doing to get this to go, I guess. You got to be into it. You got to want this in, in some aspects for some people. You've got to have the reason for this being your existence. And I'm obsessed. I'm totally as me and Dom have talked about many, many times, I am 120% obsessed <laughs> day, night, sleep, whatever, with what I do. I can shut that off, but if we're out somewhere, I'm at the mall going to dinner or whatever I'm doing, and there's a deal at one of the stores there, I want to see how good the deal is. I'm sorry, but the wife gets into it too. It's exciting. It's it's a thrill. Usually it's an FBA item, so I don't even have to worry about it. It goes to my to my our car, the van, or wherever, sits in the garage till the next morning, and my, my office depot box goes out in the mail the next day, you know, as long as it's in season and I can send it. But yeah, I see you're laughing. You know what I mean. If you're out no, probably, I'm the same way. I'm totally I can't even go to Kroger's. That's why I like to get the Kroger's from online because if I go to Kroger's, I'll be in there 20 extra minutes checking the discount section by the vitamin section. I so, know. you know, I know, I know I'm, so, I, I'm the same way. I, I am obsessed with this stuff as well. And, um, I don't wait. need to do that though. That's the point. I can make money easier, but if I'm, if I'm there and there's a deal, I, 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 I you know, vitamins was the last one. It was $10 plus profit for each bottle. They had like 60 right. bottles of vitamins. Right. What are you going to do? Right. Exactly. You don't technically need it, but you know, I didn't need it at all. Still, still going to get it. I'm still, still going to get it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's how we are. But, we did uh, walnuts like that two or three years ago, and I ended up with like 100 pounds of walnuts. We sold every one of them, though, for Christmas. Right, right. No, it makes sense. But, um, you know, 
another thing it kind of ties back to something i mentioned earlier which does which motivates me and kind of a little additional expansion to yvette's um question for me and i would it's all about challenge what i'm going to say is about challenging your, challenging yourself and i'm going to challenge people who are watching this chat to challenge yourself think about what it is you're doing every day especially if you're just getting into reselling or maybe you've been doing reselling for a while and just take a look and sit back and think of the things you've done, the things you've accomplished and ask yourself if you're happy with that, or would you like to challenge yourself to do something new, something that you haven't done before and challenge yourself to do that. So for me, for my professional career, I'm mid career. I've already accomplished the main things that I wanted to do in that. And so I was looking to just challenge myself to do something different. I could have sat there for the next 15 years until I 10, 15 years until I'm eligible to retire and just continue to do the same thing every single day, groundhog day for the next 10, 15, 10, 15 years and be completely content. But just that's just not how I'm built. That's not how I'm wired. And I don't want to do that. So I wanted to challenge myself to do something new, which then led to getting into reselling even more and then challenging myself with the YouTube channel. And then within that, there's constantly new challenges that are evolving all the time just within that space in terms of diversifying into new niches or doing new and different things on YouTube to keep things fresh. So there's always ways to just try to expand and grow. So you know, I would just encourage people to challenge yourself because those challenges are things you could put on yourself and it's you taking control over things again. So it's just another way. And I could tell you just one last thing, Don, um, as someone who works in the mental health uh, profession, the, the one of the main number one things that leads to mental health problems, whether it's depression, anxiety, anger control problems, the like, a very common theme amongst all those things is a perception of a lack of control. And as a result of that, people develop maladaptive, some people develop maladaptive responses to deal with that. And that's what leads to mental health problems. But it's at its core is a feeling that you don't have control over things. And so it's very, very important, even from a mental health perspective, to get into that mindset to feel like you do have control. Yeah. And uh, let me piggyback on that for just a second here. For, for a lot of folks out there, you're going from a traditional nine to five. I'm, I'm using nine to five as an example, yeah, but you're working 40 yeah, hour week or, or, or whatever the case may yeah, be. Yeah. And you've got a regime you've got to do. You've got to follow the steps. You've got to follow the rules. And now all of a sudden you're, you're doing something that you're, you're in control, but you've never been in control before. So to some people, it's a scary thing. When I first started off in this, you know, straight out of college. I mean, I earned a master's degree. I figured it'd be so easy. It, it was really rough. It was hard. It was it was depressing many times. But I I didn't give up. I had no choice. We we kept going with it. I didn't didn't let it dog me down. The 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 point being that I was looking ahead. What would happen in a few years from now? Where, where do I see growth? What's going on? Am I understanding how this is all working? I'm looking at all these things that I can do. The, the, the nerve, the, 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 the frightening aspect of this, I can fully understand and get. Because again, you're living item to item instead of paycheck to paycheck. If you can't find items, it can be a very, very daunting task for, for folks, especially if you're new to running a business and getting it all, all going. It's not the easiest thing to do. I know there's a lot of videos out there that'll tell you this is easy. You just buy this or buy that, and you're going to be making thousands of dollars every single day of the week and stuff. It's not easy at all. And and don't come into this thinking it's just going to be some easy money. There's people that, that, for me, it's easy to do what I'm doing now because I've done it for so long. But for the most part, it's not like that. There'll right. be one person here, one person there who just instantly figured out some way to do it. It happens. It's it's a fact of life. But for me, it hasn't been that easy. It, it, it's taken me understanding and digging into every little aspect of what I do to, to get it going to where it's at now, to having, what, 14, 14 different revenue streams coming in right this minute because of that, from one to 14 different different flows of money coming in. So, you know, don't just think about what it's going to be right this minute or tomorrow or, or two, two months down the road. 
plan it ahead of time, invest a little time into research, looking into how stuff works, new areas or whatever the case may be a little at a time. As you do this, you'll get better and better and better and better and better. That's the point. Anybody can do that though. Anybody. Yeah. yeah, it's true. It's true. I know I've been terrible on calling out names, so I do apologize for not getting any call outs. My, I, I'm having a little trouble reading the screen. I didn't remember to blow it up large. So my, 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 vision isn't the greatest looking at it so anyway i do appreciate everybody coming on if you haven't hit the like button yet please hit the like button um you got a few more minutes dom how's your yeah, time running here absolutely absolutely yeah because we've got quite a few still in the house so i don't want to uh cut it off prematurely if people are still enjoying the conversation now dom as well as me i am sure this is this is this is us this isn't a put on to, to give you false anything on this. Uh, this is me when you're out in public and you run into me. This is me all of the time, other than the wife or the kids or something like that. But when I'm in business mode, this is business mode. And I think Dom is, is the same, same way. So I'm, I'm take what I say with a grain of salt, but I'm trying to give you, as is Dom, the, the, the most helpful information that's helped me, helped him to, to get to somewhere in this business. Because again, it, it takes effort everything about it. I mean, Dom's room looks like a collectible, you know, showroom almost, you know? So, I mean, I have stuff all over the walls. I, I enjoy what I do. I enjoy looking at it and it, it's motivation enough for me to, what am I going to get tomorrow? I picked up some of the comic books for one a Micronauts series. And I know somebody called out in Micronauts. I think it was Biotron in the box. I, I, I don't remember who had that, but uh, an example, I'm keeping those for right now. I, I got seven issues of metal men, which I had as a kid, 10 centers, and I'm keeping those. So it's all enjoyable and you never know. I feel like Indiana Jones a lot of the time. I get to do the research, I get to dig into books, and then I get to go out there and crawl through some decrepit tunnel in a barn somewhere and dig out some buried treasure to idle off the, the pedestal in the temple, it feels like. I mean, doesn't it feel like that sometimes? Uh, yeah. Yeah, in fact, I actually have a video of me uh, crawling through a decrepit crawl space that was Star just, Wars place. Yeah, the Star Wars collection. Yeah, I just actually sold that Death Star for uh, playset for one hundred fifty-five dollars. It had some damage on it, but that that was yeah, that was a that was a fun time. But yeah, I love that stuff. For me, Don, I joke, but um, the dirtier and the more disorganized and chaotic, the better. It's a greater chance that you're gonna find. Uh, treasures is the way i look at it yep yep and it's it's the buried stuff some of my favorite picks mississippi there was a store in, in near hattiesburg that was it was like a three-story building it's a big white building and you had to literally like slide sideways it was probably a fire hazard probably in any other city in, in the country it would have probably been shut down but the guy was some old man he'd only open it up like on the weekend if he was feeling right and stuff and i don't know how many times we rode by there trying to get in there but when i got in there man i didn't want to leave i swear to you i was probably in that store until he asked us to leave from the time he opened up because it was just such a it, it was cool we we filled up the car we had to keep taking stuff out to the car we had a running tally the wife was getting into it she found some barbies there was some sharon cabbage rose depression glass and it was just stuff stacked up everywhere you could barely you had to move stuff to get into another area and, and that was enjoyable dangerous or not you know and one other one like that too we i, I did a haul at a five-story building downtown toledo on jefferson street down here and it was a rickety old building built in like uh, 1890 or 1903. It had a huge skylight on the top floor. But I had to, it was, it was just this massive building, like 20,000 20, square feet per floor, five floors, just jam-packed to some guy who went to auctions. The most dangerous one, I, I got hurt. I cut myself. I punctured my foot, but I, I, I enjoyed it. It was, it was, I hate to say a well worth any injury I had. I had scars. I probably still have a scar from it, but that was... That was an incredible thing that I, I, it was like one of those dream picks. It was like literally being Indiana Jones swooping this stuff out of a building that's going to collapse. And it was really neat. That's the kind of stuff that, that really gets me going. That's true. It's a good point. I think that for, for those of you out there who've been doing this for a while, or even if you haven't and you started relatively recently and maybe had some amazing place that you went to, uh, that, that, that just stays etched in your memory and you're 
you continuously relive that experience and you want to have it again. And so, you know, that's another thing, speaking of motivation, that just keeps me motivated is that you just never know, you know, the the one of the best, if not the best pick I ever went on. I just happened to be driving, you know, out of my development and I got a call from the local estate sale dealer who, again, different person, knew I was into comic books and said, hey, Dominic, listen, I've got this house. It's a it's like a hoarder house and I can't run the state sale because there's that many comic books jammed all over this house. So I need you to come and get these comic books out of here so I could run the state sale. And I remember just sitting there in the parking lot, a little place near my house and just like, wow, like just, just like that, my whole, everything changed. I still have stuff from that collection and that was years ago. So, uh, it's just, you know, it's just a good example, but I think about that all the time. And I always tell the state sale dealer when I, when I see her, I say, Hey, you know, I, I still always remember that I have fond memories of just going there multiple days, digging through there with her and the other estate sale employees to clear out the house. There were treasures besides comic books, there, toys. It was just so, it was so crazy. It was so much fun. I keep telling myself, I noticed something out there that's even better than that. And, uh, I want to. I want to find it. I want to be around to find it. I, I fully agree. I, the the research part I love. I I yeah. I source more targeting stuff a lot these days, and I love trying to figure out what was in a building or what might be there, or tracking down the owners from plat maps and stuff like that. Some of the the weirdest best halls were stuff like that, like out of the way. No one would have ever have even thought about it. But again, I'm controlling what I get. I can tr I pass on stuff all the time just because I don't need it. Again, like I was saying, like going to Kroger's, I don't like going only because I I'll spend time in the, the discount section. Walmart, I, I I hate going to Walmart for many reasons, but because our my Walmart is terrible. They don't mark stuff down. So if you take okay. your phone and use their app, you can get stuff for half what they got it on the shelf and no one knows it. So if I go in there, I'm usually at the toy aisle for like 30 minutes and then I got to go down the markdown, the electronics. And then the video games, too. I picked up some video games for the kids the other day that were half off, almost half off, like 47%. Right. I mean, it's one of those addictions, I guess. So Yeah, yeah, you're right. It, it, is, it is pretty – it can be addicting. There's no doubt about it, for sure. So I mean, It's like cha-ching, cha-ching in your head every time you see something. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Five bucks, 10 bucks, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. You know, it just keeps adding up. It's, it's those hunt downs, though, that, that make you the most money, the ones that take you time to dig into, the ones that other folks gave up because they had to call somebody more than three times. That, that's the kind of thing people give up on even sourcing aspects of it. You know, if I took no for an answer, you know, I'd, I'd never have gotten anything good, you know, or if I didn't ask back to the ask question here. Um, I think we'll probably kind of wrap it up here in a couple minutes. We're after the hour now, if that. I know we've got, let, let me end it off with one little story for you. I think Shoot. people will like this. Okay. Now I didn't see this, but Mrs. This is verified from Mrs. Primetime this weekend. We were both at the flea market together and uh, she was looking at jewelry. This is on father's day. And um, <laughs> there's a, a good dealer who I, who I know. And um, he was the one selling the jewelry. So Mrs. Primetime's going through all this stuff. And he happened to be wearing a vintage, Ozzy Osbourne concert t-shirt and a guy came up to him and said hey I love your t-shirt said thanks he said I want to buy it off your back he said you want to buy my t-shirt off my back he said yeah I'll buy it from you right now he said would you sell it to me he goes if you have a replacement t-shirt for me he's like sure yeah no problem so he goes gets the guy a replacement t-shirt says how much you want for it he offered him like 50 bucks guy's like all right you know he's like you know makes a joke like all right ladies turn around you know and takes his shirt off gives it to the guy guy walked away with a vintage ozzy osborne t-shirt my point in sharing that story is that is a person who really took control who's like wow like I'm going to do something outside the box that most people wouldn't do. I'm going to literally, I want this so bad. I'm going to buy it off this guy's back at the flea market. He doesn't even have it marked for sale. And I'm going to literally buy it off his back. I think that's a great example of taking control. <laughs> Just like buying stuff off the walls at, at sales and stuff or, or the, the light sockets, the, the light plates, switch plates, all that stuff is for sale. Register plates, 
anything that you can ask stuff that's not even listed don't nothing for sale here i've asked for things that were in the nothing for sale section and still got them so you know don't take no for an answer if they say no you move on if it's in the do not ask do not you know it's not for sale i still do ask you'll be surprised how much would, could i get it for 100 bucks I'd give you 200 for it. You'd be surprised at what what they'll let go out of right. an estate sale if they think $200. Wow, this guy's crazy to spend 200 on that. Right. Again, like an Ozzy shirt like that. Some of those shirts can go for 500 bucks or better. You know, obviously uh, the classic concert shirts do. I've sold some for some high dollars. I wish I had half of the ones that I used to own from the concerts I used to go to. I do have a question here with a super chat from Bat Gamer Show. Hopefully I haven't missed any, but let, let me see here if I can pop up and get really close for just a second. What free shipping supplies people don't know about also, and how do I get negative removed if eBay won't do it? It, it depends on what the reason is with the negative first. It depends on what the reason is that you got negative feedback. If the buyer is saying, let's say that the item wasn't correctly described or something, that is allowed and eBay will not remove it. If they mention your name, they mention something false, or they complained about, say, you didn't ship it on time and you can prove you did, that could be removed because it would be considered slanderous from the ones that I've had removed. Um, if you have free returns and, you know, the 30-day free returns as well, and they open up a return or, or any issue case whatsoever, and you follow through with everything you're supposed to do, you can't get negative feedback at all from those listings. Right. Another thing, reason why I always do... 30-day uh, free return for every single item in my store. And I almost never have a return. I literally, I think all of last year I had seven. Three of them were from the same person, which was a case I talked about in another video about a scammer that I had. So, you know, take it for what it's will on that one there. Now, I'll give my explanation. Now, Dom can chime in on the same ones too. So you can hear it from two different versions with shipping supplies. Now, I personally buy all of them, but I've got it figured into my shipping costs. So I don't really, it doesn't cost me a dime. Some things I do get though, like uh, tubes from the um, uh, carpet supply companies. Now I don't get those big massive ones. I get the smaller ones for like the smaller fabric or I'll get them from like Joanne Fabrics and things like that for mailing posters. I never buy poster tubes at all. Um, I know people do the dumpster diving and stuff for, um, as well, but I don't do it. Most of the ones around here are locked and I just, I don't want to deal with it. Nothing wrong. I've watched enough videos of people dumpster diving. It's just not me. Um, and I do ship to a lot of like museums and colleges, a lot of the vintage stuff. And I just, it's easier for me to have all one size of cardboard so I can ship out uniformly, all set the same. I never have to worry about finding a box or anything else like that. You want to cover those two, Dom? Uh, yeah. So it, it, well, to the question on how do you get negative feedback removed if eBay won't do it, um, you've got to then use oh, no. your skills of persuasion to try to open up a dialogue with the buyer and convince them to do a feedback revision to remove that um, negative feedback. And that is possible. You can do that. I have done that uh, on several occasions. Um, so you have to be uh, skillful with that. And um, sometimes you just simply have to explain yourself. Um, I had an instant, re instant recently, Don, you'll get a kick out of this. Um, sold, a, sold, a, sold a book. And I said in the description that the book has an inscription inside but that it otherwise doesn't have any writing. And I explained the inscription. So next thing you know, I get a, I can't remember if it was a negative or neutral feedback, but either way, um, person says is the complaint that the book had writing inside, but it wasn't explained in the listing. So I wrote the person and I said, um, are you referring to the inscription on the inside flap? And a person said, um, you know, there, I said, there's some writing there. The person said, yeah. So I said, well, I said that in the listing. That's what inscription means. And I think the person just didn't know what inscription means. So that was a, a lesson for me that sometimes I got to be careful with the vocabulary words that I'm using in the listing. They might not have read it though either. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So, um, you know, I should just make it more simplified and just say writing or whatever for, for next time. But then the 
a person said, oh yeah, okay. I didn't realize that, 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 you know, and then the person I said, okay, well, would you be willing to do, um, a, a feedback revision on that one? And the person said, yes. And then they, they, they removed it and turned it into a positive. So, um, that, that's the only thing, you know, really that you could do if eBay is not going to step in to help you with the free shipping supplies. I literally have an entire video called how to get all your shipping supplies for free. So go check that one out. But, um, basic, just, examples of some things i love to go to the bread section at the uh, local grocery store because their bread boxes are awesome nice and strong and sturdy uh use them for protecting uh, comic books and magazines and, and other types of things i get boxes for free through my workplace i also will pick them up in the grocery store anywhere i see a cardboard box that i could reuse i'll use it people sh um you know amazon boxes that come to the house uh, I'll reuse those. I save all the bubble wrap and the air pillows um, and get, use that stuff for free. But at a certain point when your business keeps growing and growing and growing, eventually you're going to have to buy some of your own shipping supplies, um, you know, because uh, there's just so much of that free stuff out there that you could get. But it can definitely help you get started and it could save you money uh, in terms of how often you have to replace these things. Yeah, I buy sometimes an entire pallet, an eight foot tall pallet of boxes yeah. occasionally, or I'll split them with right. somebody else to get them dirt cheap. Usually 14 inch cubes or 12 inch cubes is what I buy. Um, it's uniform. It's easy. It stores across all the tops of all the shelves in here. I don't, I, I've got it set up. I cut my boxes a certain way or somebody else here does it. So everything is uniform. And it, for me, it's hard to worry about trying to source boxes because we send out the same hundreds of items small items right. all the same and it's just so right. easy to cut right. the boxes into 16 strips and then i'm done right you know one box will ship out 16 items it depends on your business of course you know there's no right or wrong way i would say but around here i can't get enough free boxes to satisfy my needs you know and then having to cut up weird shaped sure. boxes and right yeah, because at a certain point, you have to factor in the time involved with going out and getting that stuff for free versus the convenience of just placing an order to get 100 boxes or something. I do the same thing. And, and remember, by the way, use your uh, if you have an eBay store, make sure you use your, um, your your discount that you get every month, the voucher that they give you to get, um, you know, free shipping supplies uh, or at least you'll know, get double some priced. Of, some of it reduced. Yeah, I get we get our the same boxes I can get for like a third the price that eBay sells them to us for. I mean, it is what it is. They're shipping included. It used to be set up differently, but one flat, you know, free ship boxes. That's the rate you're done with it. You, you get it. You might as well use it. It is free. Um, usually, I think I'm getting the 12 or what is it? 14, 14, 12s, I think is what they were, mm -hmm. which they finally brought back the bigger ones. But other than that, I buy everything else. Yeah. Um, I'm not a big fan of eBay's free box free again we'll use the quotes free boxes right. because it, right. it's it's i would rather have the discount just give me 150 bucks off my bill or give me a choice you can either get the boxes or get 150 dollars off your bill yeah they'll never do that because i know they you, won't they want you to spend more than the gift card is or whatever well of course yeah. because the, yeah. the boxes they're making a profit on right you can't tell me they're not there's no way on earth they're not because i get mine from the box manufacturer i know what they cost right. i know what it costs to make them here locally because they make them where i buy boxes from I mean, they don't just buy them. They corrugate the cardboard. They got the steam pressers. They make the boxes. I know what it costs. And this is from a smaller plant. eBay is getting a massive size. So it, I can get them for a third the cost. So if you don't need the boxes, um, get tape from eBay. But don't waste your free. I think what's it, 25? I get 150 per, per store. So I think it's what, 25, 75, and then 150? Isn't that what it is? I think so. Something like that. They used to give out, um, I think you used to get $25 worth of what, promoted or something too? Some yeah. kind of, uh, something. Yeah. I don't, I never used any yeah. of that. So. They used to do that, but they don't do that anymore. Yeah, I thought I heard, I, I never used it. it. I don't, away. don't use any of that stuff. None of that stuff at all. Well, let's, let's wrap it up because we, I've said it now and we've, we've ended up both talking again for another 10 minutes. It is getting late. I've been up since five something. I'm sure Dom's been up since pretty early in the morning as well. I do honestly and sincerely thank everybody for coming on at this point. You know, I know it's a little later than usual. Um, I do appreciate all the kind support. I appreciate, you know, having Dom on. It's always enjoyable to have him on. We usually have a real good time when we're here. So, uh, again, you want any final thoughts or words there, Dom, you want to throw out there? 
Um, just I will quickly reiterate a point Noel Griffith Farm Girl Scavenger made that yes, can't use liquor boxes. Be careful with that. Ship stuff in and you get uh, in trouble with that one. So uh, and I don't source those. But um, yeah, folks, I hope that um, you know, you heard a repeated theme over and over, consistent with the show title and many different examples of how Don and I try to take a take control. Uh, attitude with your business and other extensions of your business and even extend it into other areas of your life. You're going to have many, many times when you get knocked down and you've got to have the mentality of just getting yourself back up. That doesn't mean you don't feel bad. That doesn't mean that, um, you know, you, you, you can't, uh, you know, ever have feelings of disappointment, but try to limit those to 24 hours and then the next day get back at it and uh, find a way through it. Uh, that's that's just how you got to go about it or you're going to, you know, you're not going to survive and, you know, in, in the business world. So, um, you know, try to again, try to have that mindset, try to build that philosophy into how you think. Remember, no one ever wrote uh, books about how to think negatively because that's very uh uh, very easy they write the books on how to think positive so you have to shift into that type well of that's mindset. a good idea though you could write a book on how to think negatively I, I, I might think yeah maybe i'll write one like that this way I, you know well someone else will so i can't say that anymore but well, not <laughs> now yeah now that we said that there you go so i uh, hope everyone enjoys the tips and stuff and uh, i do have another uh video coming out tomorrow night a premiere at 9 p.m eastern standard time if anyone's interested it's about an insane uh, well, part of it's about an insane uh, garage sale that I went to for, for a um, antique dealer who was uh, retiring after 30 years and his whole garage looked like a bomb exploded and there were just treasures everywhere that you could dig through. I have a picture of it on the on the channel right now for the premiere. So part of the video is me going through there and digging through it and finding treasures and that's the kind of stuff Don and I just love. So, um, you know, keep hunting, keep uh, finding those treasures and uh uh thanks for thanks for coming by tonight and spending some time with us definitely definitely so last words of thought and just a few call outs uh patreon video is up already it was just up before the show i've answered everything up until i think five o'clock when i had to cut off to do something else so if you've had uh anything posted i did respond i asked for a couple um responses from a few folks on maybe a few more images on some of the items you needed pricing with um again the second half should be up this weekend my postcard if you want to know how to make money off of postcards and print your own postcards videos up tomorrow on the art professor my other channel um this video for this channel is already done as well too i try to get ahead i got some things going on next week so there'll be a video up early probably tomorrow for this channel as well um talking about some things you need to be aware of with some of the the new ebay features they've put out so worth a watch worth paying attention to it will save you some aggravation some time and i hope to explain some things that they've got going on in a little better detail but again thank you very uh, kindly for coming on dom always pleasant always thank nice you. to have you on thanks everybody for coming on the show and we will end it at that hope you have a good day keep it up don't give up tomorrow's a different day so you never know what's going to happen in the future <laughs>